Hey guys, what's up? It's Paul Salazar at Hilton and Highland. If you're an agent and you're struggling to find lead sources, then this video is for you. I'm gonna share my top 30, yes, I said it right, 30 lead sources. Um, and if you stick around to the end, I'm gonna throw in two bonus sources that are gonna help grow your business. So I'm currently driving up Doheny, and if you're from LA, you know where I'm at. I'm in the famed Bird Streets in the Hollywood Hills. I'm gonna be showing my new listing, 9274 Warbler Way in the Hollywood Hills to an A-list celebrity, and no, I cannot disclose the name. Uh, but if you have any guesses, make sure you leave the comment below. Before we start, and if you're new to my channel, I've been in the industry for about 16 years and work with Hilton and Highland Real Estate Beverly Hills. All right, I'm gonna start with my favorite lead sources that, that bring my business the most results. Number one, expired and canceled listings. Number two, for sale by owners. Number three, circle dialing. And number four, for rent by owners. I use Vulcan 7, and yes, these are not easy to convert, but if you sharpen your sales skills, you will be amazed on how much your business will grow. So number five is gonna be mass texting and number six is gonna be mass voicemail. I use a CRM called CR Interactive and what I'm able to do is I'm able to upload a big CSV file and I'm able to send out a mass text and a mass voicemail to homeowners either around an open house or if I have a buyer looking in a certain area. Number seven, and please, this is one of the most important ones, is a geo farm, geographic farm. Gotta make sure that you have an area, around 500 houses at least minimum, um, to start. And it, it, it'll take a while for you to get any traction there, around, you know, I would say six to 12 months. But if you keep working that area, you're gonna see great conversion. Number eight is gonna be your sphere of influence. You cannot forget your friends, your family, and your past clients. Number nine is gonna be divorces. Yes, there's a lot of divorce going on in the United States since COVID, but a great source uh, for, for seller leads. Number 10 is probate and trust sales. So whenever anybody passes away, it's, if it's under a trust, it's gonna create a trust sale. Or if it's not under a trust, it'll create a probate sale. So speaking to a probate attorney or a trust attorney is a good idea to find some leads. Number 11 are absentee owners. So get a list from your title company of anybody who owns a property as an investment property, which means that under the title, uh, it will have a different mailing address than the actual physical address. Send the mailers, give them a call, ask them if they want to sell. All right, so number 12 is a mega open house. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I dedicated an entire video to just doing that. So check the links down below and you can access that video. And then the next one is gonna be door knocking. I mean, we cannot forget the most basic uh, part of being a real estate agent is really door knocking, you know? And I think that's really an effective way to find sellers in a really tight seller's market. Number 14 are events. Um, this takes a little bit more planning, but a great way to get in front of people. Maybe you have a school event, right? And you promote or sponsor the school event and you know cater the food and drinks. All right, number 15, and of course, everybody knows about this, it's social media, right? There's Instagram, there's YouTube, there's TikTok, there's Pinterest, there's, uh, there's all kinds of different social sites that you can use to get leads. Right now, what's working is YouTube. Um, it's not easy being for a camera, I tell you that, but um, it's a great way to get leads. All right, number 16 is market update. Everybody wants to know what their house is worth, right? So giving them a really high level um, analysis of the market is really important. You can do a video and promote it on YouTube and run ads, Facebook, Instagram, uh, or you can just print out a really nice market update and send it out to your geographic farm. All right, 17 is webinars. This again is not really easy, but you can do it, right? All you do is do a PowerPoint. If you don't have Microsoft Office, do it on Google. That's what I use. Um, I use Google and we have maybe around five or, or 10 slides and we can teach, you know, first time home buyers, uh, first time sellers, um, how to become a buyer if you're a renter. There's so many ideas, guys. You could promote it on LinkedIn, on YouTube, on any other social site. That's a great way to be the expert is to be on video and to do a webinar. Number 18 is Google Ads. Yes, you may think that this is only for the big corporations, but guess what? There are a lot of real estate agents that are running Google Ads and they're getting leads, right? It's the, it's the most powerful website in the world and that's where everybody goes to find anything. So think about running Google Ads and you can start with a small budget um, and then go from there. 
All right, so number 19 is Google My Business. Tom Ferry is a huge advocate of it. I am as well. I've gotten some leads from it and it's totally free. You can do posts on there. You can uh, put a video on there. You can promote an open house through events, have products, which are your listings. So it's a great way to promote your business. All right, we're finally here. Let me know your thoughts on the first 19 lead sources by leaving a comment down below. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you wanna watch more content like this. So check it out. Hey guys, you're finally in my newest listing, 9274 Warbler Way, just under $5 million in the famed Bird Streets. So I'm gonna give you the rest of my lead sources. Number 20 is gonna be the obvious, agent referrals. Don't forget about agent referrals. Find out where people are coming to and leaving to your area. So for instance, Los Angeles, a lot of people from New York and from Chicago are coming to LA, but they're also leaving to Texas. So know those stats and then go out there and make the connections with the agents. Number 21 is lender referrals. Uh, make sure that not only are you giving business to your lender, but make sure that you have a lender that's giving you business as well. That's very important. Number 22 may seem obvious, but if you're looking for buyer leads, buyers that are looking to buy right now, look at Zillow, look at realtor.com. They're not cheap, but if you can convert those leads, the ROI is amazing. All right, number 23, if you're looking for online seller leads, is gonna be Opendoor. Opendoor is a great platform. They are gonna take 25% of your, of your commission check, but would you rather have something than nothing? All right, so number 24, as I'm looking at this amazing view here in the Bird Streets, is lead generating real estate websites. So CR Interactive, which is a CRM I use, they have a website dedicated to getting leads. They use Google Ads, they use other sources, but it's not a branding website. It's a, it's a different kind of website that just gets leads for you. All right, so number 25 is gonna be buyer and seller landing pages. Very easy to set up. And what you wanna do is you wanna point a QR code or like, like a postcard right into a landing page. Maybe you could do it for first time home buyers or for sellers in a specific area. All right, as you're sitting here in the master bedroom of my listing here in the Bird Streets, I'm gonna give you number 26 and then 27. 26 is gonna be a seller letter that is gonna be with a handwritten envelope, not a printed label because that's not gonna get the same result as a handwritten envelope, okay? So that's really important. And number 27 is buy a book of business. How many people are selling real estate in their 70s and their 80s? There's a lot and they're looking to retire. Why not ask them, hey, can I buy your book of business? All right, number 28 is gonna be bank owned properties. It may not be popular in certain sellers markets, but once the market shifts into a buyer's market, we're gonna see more REOs. Start reaching out now to the companies that control those bank owned properties. Number 29 may seem obvious, but very few realtors actually do it. It's joining a local business organization. There's so many of them, you know, your local um, chamber of commerce, um, and there's gotta be a ton of other ones, alumni organizations, join them and start talking about real estate. All right, my last one, number 30, are developers, right? Depending on what area you're in, they may be looking for big plots of land or they're looking to tear down older houses. So reach out to, to developers, find out what they're looking for and start marketing to those sellers. All right, I promise you if you stay until the end, I would give you two additional lead sources. Number one is Picasso. It's a company that was formed by a Zillow founder. And what they do is they buy luxury property in different areas, Fort Lauderdale, Park City, Malibu, and they buy luxury property and subdivide them into eight different shares. So give them a call and find out what they're looking for if you're in these markets. And if you, if you find what they're looking for, you can represent them as well as a seller. So you can double end them. All right, number 32 is my favorite. I always like, like to save the best for last. And that's the QR code postcard. It's not my idea, I wish it was, but my coach Tom Ferry suggested it to his whole ecosystem. And all it is, is a very simple postcard. And it says, scan here to check your home value. And it's a QR code and the homeowner uh, scans it. It goes to a landing page. They input their address and their email and guess what? You just found a seller lead. Thanks for watching and thanks for touring my house at 9274 Warbler Way. If you have any questions about these lead sources or if I missed any, make sure to leave a comment down below and I'll make sure to answer. I'll see you guys later.